This is uh, the round table with Bujang goaltending. You guys were lucky enough to only have the two good looking guys on today. We are missing one. That is a blessing for everyone. Uh, this is episode four. We're pumping these things out pretty quick. Um, that's what you do when you got nothing else to do, just boredom is taking over. So we're just pumping out as much content as we can. Uh, today we have a special guest, Dylan Kelly, uh, DK, the mobility guy on Instagram. You guys can look him up. Uh, also a man rocket. You guys will see when we, when we get him later on in a little bit, but this guy knows the stuff. He's going to talk to us about some goalie specific mobility stuff you guys can do. We'll talk a little bit about his career and, uh, what he's going to be doing next. Pretty good. I'm excited. Uh, we did, we skated with DK. How many years ago was your pro prospects camp? Uh, this would be two. This would be the, this would be a year three for pro week. Pro. Yeah, it was pro week. That would have been my second year pro. Did we? It started second year pro. I don't know, man. Time's flying by. Man, time legit. Time is. I can't believe it's it's been that long. DK is a good guy. Excited. He uh, really raw when he came to skate with you, but got a lot better and you know, he's, he's carved himself a pro career right now. That's pretty sick. I can't. We don't want to talk too much. We want to talk about him once once he's on the pod, but. Oh, you, are you as bored as I am these days? Because I am so bored. I am bored, man. Uh, been doing some renovations here on ice. Trying to, I got some downtime, so I might as well try to do some improvements. So, uh, yeah, I thought I broke my finger yesterday. I don't know if you guys can see that, but don't use your finger as a nail because the hammer is always going to win. So what are you doing? Like, what, what are the improvements you're doing on ice right now? Uh, just melt the ice down. Melt the ice down, fix the crease a little bit. The thinner the ice is, the harder the ice is going to be, so it's going to be a little bit better, especially for the beginning of summer programs, right? I really like to start the first four weeks of summer off with a lot of dynamic skating, so that really chews up the ice. So the thinner the ice is, the harder the ice is going to be. It's going to hold up a lot better for some of those elite guys when they start doing a lot of edge work. So get that ice down, fix it, fixed up some a little bit of the walls, toughen them up for, uh, for doing some option drills. So just little things to stay busy. That's pretty good. Last week we were talking about sticks and I was, I was thinking about it. Do you remember when, if you, I guess if you have the normal glove on your left hand, your blocker and your right, but you're naturally a right-handed shooter. Do you remember like not even that long ago, like maybe what, seven years, some coaches used to tell guys to flip their stick over, shoot it off their backhand and shoot right instead of just learning to shoot left. Do you remember that? I remember that. It used to drive me nuts. Why, why was that even a thing? Because Curtis Joseph. Anytime we talk about sticks, we bring up Curtis Joseph. Curtis Joseph used to do that. He used to remember when he signed with the Leafs back, I think it was like 97, 98. And uh, the first, first, when I really started getting into kind of like evaluating goalies, and I saw him doing that, it, it blew my mind. It just didn't make any sense to me. How about some of the guys that used to come in and work with me, that they would come in with a right-handed stick, but they would be regular-handed goalies. So I'm like, the why backhand, is your... the backhand would face the puck. The backhand would face the puck. So I, I'm like, what is? Why are we doing this? He's like, well, if I want to play the puck, I got to flip it over. I, I'm like, why don't you just learn how to shoot left? There's there's a lot of guys that are like naturally right-handed shooters that have to and are forced to learn to shoot left. That's just the way it is. If you want to be a good puck handling goalie and you play at a high level, you just don't. The time doesn't allow you. The the pace of the game doesn't allow you to flip that stick over if you're under urgency. So at worst, you have to be able to shoot left and right. What drives me nuts too, like when I coach younger kids and like nowadays everyone shoots, I don't know what it's called it, but like the Turco grip to grip a stick. Like when, when I, like when I was what, 11, 12, that was when Marty Turco first flipped his hand over the stick. But when there's still young kids, they refuse to do it because like it is, it is awkward when you're young, you can't fully close your glove. But I can't, it's crazy that they're, that like kids refuse to play the puck like that. It just gives you so many advantages. You can shoot in your forehand, your backhand, you can control the puck where there's like, there are still some goalies. I just prefer to shoot underhand. Well, if we're talking about younger guys, you get a 10 year old or an 11 year old who's wearing an intermediate glove 
and some of the manufacturers, you can't close that thing. Like sure. their hand, their hands are too small. The padding in the hands is thick. Um, there's just, there's no way that they can close that glove to get a good grip on that stick. So it's hard to get them to comfortable with that because I see it even in the lessons when I'm trying to teach it. It takes them a long time to get the glove in a good position where they can squeeze it. But in a game, it's just not realistic for them to be able to do that. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't work on that technique. Or if the kid, if, when you're first introducing it to a kid, you can do puck handling and have them take the glove off as long as there's no pucks getting shot at them where they can get used to feeling that stick with the hand, getting used to flipping that puck over or that glove over to grab it and get a hold of that stick. And they can still do get some reps in that way. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I find puck handling comes, the guys kind of hit their stride around 15 to 17 years old when it's, they have the confidence to do it. And then their frame, their body and their strength allows them to be a little bit more proficient at it. So, but it's definitely something that I try to push guys to do when they're young. Um, because like we talked on a pod one on episode one, uh, it's a huge advantage. And I had actually had a good conversation with some of my minor midget guys. I asked them, I said, in minor midget, which is your draft here in uh, Ontario for the OHL, how many guys in your league are touching the puck five to seven times a game? And the answer I got from everybody was about 80%. So if you're not in that 80% of guys who are going out and actively handling the puck, you're now in the minority. And when you have guys scouting every single game, if you are in the minority for any of your skill set, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. So learn to handle the puck early know that you're going to make mistakes and be okay with the fact that, you know what, you're going to make mistakes, but at the end of the day, it's a skill that you're going to get better at. You're going to get more comfortable with it. And eventually you're going to get significantly better at it. So uh, don't be afraid to make a mistake guys, like get out there and handle the puck and know that you're going to look bad at certain times, but that's okay. And then adding on that, if there are any, you know, coaches listening to this, not just goalie coaches, like coaches of teams, especially for young kids, you know, tell your goalies that it, you have confidence in them, in them and you want them to play the puck. I mean, like if you're, you know, before you, if you're playing minor hockey, whether that's from house league, triple a, like it, you're trying to develop kids. Like it's, you're not trying to win the Stanley cup. So for everyone needs to relax first off, but your coach, tell your goalies like, yeah, go out and play it. Try to make the safe play. Try to make a good play. Give the kids confidence because nothing's worse than, you know, when you, we have like, 13 year old kid who just got ripped apart by his coach because he turned it over. Now the kid's scared to go play the puck and refuses to play the puck because he got yelled at. And as a kid, like when your coach is ripping you apart, it, you know, it impacts you for a long time. So if there are any head coaches out there, just give your goalies not free of them to be dumb with the puck, but just give them the confidence that if you understand that it's okay if they make mistakes every now and then. And that's how they're going to learn. So that's really important if, you know, it's really important for a goalie development to be have the confidence from your coaches to play the puck. Oh yeah. And at the end of the day, how important is a regular season game? Like really? Right. Not, like, I mean, it's yeah, if like you're losing a hockey game in October because your goalie turned the puck over. Does it really matter at the end of the day in March? In no. minor hockey, in minor hockey, no, especially a lot of those leagues where everybody makes playoffs. Yeah. Like when it, when it comes if to, if yeah. If your goaltender is making mistakes in October and you kind of build his confidence and allow him to make those mistakes, then when it comes to March, he's going to have the confidence, but he's also going to have the experience of learning it and developing it over the course of the year. Where when it comes to playoff time, he's going to be more, he's going to be more efficient at it. And now he's adding another layer to your team that is now an advantage in a playoff series. I, I I agree completely. It's just I, man, it's, some of these coaches like they're just hardos. They're just hardos. Like especially it's a lot of them. I don't know. I, I don't even want to start ripping coaches on here, but it's a lot of coaches that never played hockey at a high level that think that their son's you know minor pee wee double A is the NHL. Like no, you're supposed to be having fun and working on getting better, and hopefully your son gets the next level. But by you know just by trying to be coach of the year like it's not about you it's about the kids and that, that's why like minor hockey I'm not looking forward to putting my own kids through minor hockey because I, I will get in the face of some coaches <laughs> you're gonna be the dad that's banned from any rink 100 meters from any rink eh? but I'm gonna be banned just because I'm like let the kids play 
that's what I'm going to get banned for. I'm not going to be banned for yelling at refs or yelling at other kids. I'll be yelling at the coach to be like, dude, relax. <laughs> let the kids learn. Let the kids make mistakes. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because nothing, nothing's worse than a kid getting burnt out of hockey because some brutal coach they had when they're 13 ruins it for them. And that sucks. You're going to – don't worry. You're going to have tough coaches when you go to college and junior and pro. You don't want to have tough coaches in minor hockey. It's, it's I think I think we just stumbled upon another podcast episode. Talk yeah, I think crazy, that's a whole other pod. Thing, yeah, we're going to have coaches have said. Oh, well, that's that's like a six six series podcast we can have with me, but we'll save that for a later date. But I think uh, I think it's time we should send it over to Dylan Kelly. All right, we're pleased to introduce our next guest. Not only is he a professional goalie, he's a mobility expert, hailing from Petoskey, Michigan. Oh, yeah. Petoskey, Michigan, played in the USHL, Michigan High School, the NAL, D3, ECHL, SPHL, and the Federal League. Welcome to the podcast, DK the Mobility Guy, Dylan Kelly. How's it going, guys? Thanks for having me. Holy suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's get let's That's get a list. Right. Let's get right. Actually, you know what? Let's get right now. You started being a goalie pretty late. Is that correct? Yeah, I started uh, freshman year of high school. What that, took you so long? That would have been what, 14, 15? Yep, 14. Uh, yeah, 14, 15. Um, honestly, I don't know. Like, when I was a kid, um, like, I was, I was a good forward. Uh, and I, I liked being a forward, but when going to tournaments and stuff, I always like was drawn to the goalies and would become buddies with the goalies. Um, I think I think a lot of it just had to do with my parents. <laughs> Honestly, they really didn't want me to become a goalie because um, I was so good at skating out, and they just like couldn't see why I'd want to switch, like because I was having so much fun um, skating out. But uh, and they probably didn't want to have to pay for the expensive gear. But finally. Um, you know, freshman year, I was like, hey, I want to do this. At the end of my eighth grade year, our goalie got hurt on the door last tournament. And I hopped in there and we ended up winning the tournament. And I got a shutout and I was like, yeah, like this is what I want to do. So the following year, they were like, all right, like you just hopped in that and won a tournament. I guess you can be a goalie. So, and then you went, hang from, on. I don't have time. Go away. <laughs> and then you went from Michigan High School to the NA3. Mm -hmm. No. What would the what what is the NA three for those that don't know? For uh, Canadian, it's tier three. Listeners. Yeah, I think it's it, what it's probably comparable to like what, what junior C. It's like it's pay to play. Um, it's like the lowest level of junior hockey. Um, at the time, the NA three was a lot smaller than what it is now. Now I think there's like what sixty teams or something in it. Um, but. Yeah, honestly, I didn't really know, like, what I was getting myself into. I had no idea what junior hockey was at that point. Like, it was only my fourth year being a goalie. Um, Randy Wilson came out and watched me, and um, he was the goalie coach, assistant coach for, for Metro at the time, and wanted me to come out there. I was supposed to be a third-string guy, and a couple guys ended up flaking last minute, so I found myself in, in a role where I was going to play right away, which was pretty awesome and great for my development. Um working with Randy like he taught me all the technical skill that I didn't have like I remember going into camp there I was pushing and stopping with the same leg like my high school goalie coach was super super old school his name is Mike Buzak unreal guy um like was huge on teaching me like how to handle the puck he was an unreal puck handler uh played for the Devils for a little bit and uh for Michigan State but um as far as movement wise it was like you stop with the leg you push with and I remember, like, I was doing, like, a like an X crease drill, like, T-push drill with Randy, like, right away. And he was like, what are you doing, blah, blah, blah. So, like, he, he really, like, had to kind of give me technical skill, like, going into my first year junior, I had none. So, um, having him around every day was huge uh, for my development. And Jason was an awesome first head coach for me. Uh, gave me a lot of gave me a lot of confidence and uh, I got to play a lot so uh, I'm actually really grateful for that that year in Metro but uh just a big learning curve like got to play a lot of games and uh it's a big jump from high school hockey and uh Petoskey high school hockey we weren't very good uh so that like that alone was just different like in high school I, I could go out and all I had to do is just stop as many pucks as I could and we were still probably gonna lose so <laughs> um, I guess like going into that first year junior, like learning how to win, um, and like actually be a part of games, 
uh, it was huge. So I'm glad well, that you talked about coaches and giving you confidence because before you got on, we had a chat about that. Um, we talked a lot about coaches instilling confidence in goalies and their ability to handle the puck. So you saying you were a good puck hitter, do you think that is because of the confidence that that coach installed or is that a carryover from when you were a player? What do you, how do you think that part of your game developed? Well, first I'll back up and uh, I'm not that great of a puck handler. <laughs> I'm much better now. Um, at the time, like in, in high school, yeah, I was a good puck handler. I think it just came with um, confidence from him. It was something we, he made me do every day in practice, shooting pucks and whatnot. So uh, just that extra work with him gave me the confidence. Um, once I got to junior and the game got a little quicker, um, I'm a righty out, out of the net. So like learning how to handle a puck lefty was definitely like a transition for me. Um, once the game got a little quicker in junior, I was still pretty active with it, but um, definitely more like there were more high risk situations that were coming out of me than when I was in high school. Um, and then in college, I just didn't get a whole lot of games. So when I was in there, like I wasn't very confident uh, going out to play the puck. I think that was something I kind of lost in college and then found again um, last year in Fayetteville. Um, playing a lot of games as the year went on, my, my confidence uh, came back. And, and this year, I, I think it was something that really um, like took over in my game. I, it's definitely a strong suit now. Um, and just, again, like getting more games, more um, repetitions, uh, the confidence came back. And uh, I think it's um, a big part of my game now. But it, it definitely was not there um, for a few years. But, yeah, uh, game reps, um, just working on it with coaches. And, I mean, I think it's important to have a coach. Like, like I had a coach that wanted me to come out and play the puck this year. And, like, that's huge as a goalie. I mean, I know some coaches can be like, stay in your net, like, let the D take care of things. And like when that's in the back of your head, it's, it kind of, it kind of can keep you from playing your game. And, you know, some goalies playing the puck is a huge part of their game, especially if you're on a good team and you're not going to see pucks, like see shots early. Like that's a way to get touches and get into the game is going out there and trying to handle it. And if your coach is on the bench or before game saying, Hey, stay in your net, like you're going to think twice about that. And so, yeah, I think uh, your coach just giving you confidence and being open with you is, is huge. Now, What's the we jump get... like? Go ahead, Jimmy. No, no. I was just going to talk about his uh, NAHL days before he broke into uh, about going to college. But what was your yeah, question? Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, like, what, how big of a jump was it from the NA3 into the NAHL? So for a lot of the guys listening to this from Ontario or from Canada, uh, the Null is the North American Hockey League, which would be considered or equivalent to Junior A in Canada. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tier, yeah, two, um, tier, tier two Junior A is, is, what it, is what it is. But for a lot of Canadians, there's not a ton of Canadians in that league. But from the stories I've heard, it's an absolute grind and a warrior league. Like, what, oh, what, yeah. was, it like, what was it like playing? The, and you played in the Texas division where it's oh, yeah. mur murderers and criminals in that league. That yep, <laughs> they say uh, the grittiest guys come out of the null, and that's that's that stands to be true as far as I'm concerned. Um, uh, so uh, after my NA3 year, I actually got called up to the USHL to be an emergency backup for Matt Morris. Um, I was there for like a week. So I had a little cup of coffee there and then started there the following year, like made the team out of camp. Um, and then right before training camp, they sent me to Corpus Christi. Um, and honestly, when I was young, like, I, I like I didn't know anything. I still hardly even knew what the NA was. Like I didn't really fully understand what it was that I was doing. So um, it was all new. Like I was the first kid out of my area to kind of go and do something like this. So um, like it, in a way, it, it felt like there was no jump, but it was a big jump. Like every every you know team or situation I went into was kind of this big. Like oh wow, like this is cool. Like in awe moment, but at the same time, like. I almost didn't really notice the like the gaps because I was just so like in a way starstruck. So I was just trying to stop pucks. Like, um, but no, the, the, the South division is something else. There was at least one or two fights every game. Um, coaches are animals. My last game there, I got in a, a full out brawl. I was in the net for three minutes, actually. Um, it's probably like my, my biggest claim to fame moment. I was backing up. We were at home against Amarillo and 
it's like seven one. We're just getting torched by Amarillo. Amarillo was the best team in the league at that point. Um, and then there's a five on three and my coach tosses, he goes, Kelly, go. And I'm like, are you kidding? Like, <laughs> we're like halfway through the second period. You're going to toss me in there cold on a five on three. I was like, all right, go in there. First shot goal, second <laughs> shot, save third shot goal. And I was like, Oh man, this can't get much worse. Fourth shot, save. Our guy goes down and just blows up their D from like from behind their goalie was Paul Barafato at the time. Um, the whole game before him and I were on the bench, like, shooting the breeze whatever uh like kind of became game buddies and then he ends up turning and jumping our guy and I'm like oh I'm going down there like get me out of this game so I, I skate all the way down like all the way down the ice um as I'm getting to the red line I'm like looking at the bench seeing what the coach is saying and he's like go 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 and I'm like oh like as I'm crossing the I'm like I'm not a very aggressive guy I can be if I need to but at that point I was like oh I just went out of this game like this is this is brutal um it was a full out brawl. So I go, I go at Paul, he's tangled up with the ref. And then I just turned and um, there's like a big mosh pit that came flying my way. And I just, everyone was throwing punches. It was pretty gnarly. And then um, I come in, I, I ended up being in the game for a total of two minutes, 59 seconds. I think it says on point streak or whatever, and give up two goals on four shots. <laughs> and, then, and then a kid gets sent down, got sent down from the USHL like the very next day. And I was gassed. <laughs> but uh it's gnarly man like um a lot of those teams out there were old what is it i think chl yeah like they were old central, like minor pro central leagues league. yeah yeah central and, uh, and united league teams too yeah yeah you all <laughs> <laughs> um but also all the rinks are huge like there's crazy promotions and all of them like i remember the circus was in town like when we were and the circus was just in town like earlier that week when we went went into play Wichita and there's like straw and hay everywhere and it like smelled like animal shit. Like <laughs> it was it was gnarly. But uh I was only there, I was only in Corpus for probably like a month and a half, two months maybe. And then you went you then you were traded up to uh to what is it? Michigan. 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 That's yeah. the, and they, that was Flint before the OHL team, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And then, so from your days in the Null, being a Null star, you ended up going to Adrian College. Uh, what was your college experience like? Was it was it good for you, or was it uh, was it not as enjoyable as some people have at school? Uh, I had a blast. Um, hockey wise, didn't play as much as I would have liked, but learned a lot. Um, learned a lot from my goalie partners there, and learned a lot uh, just about my work ethic. Um, I think going into school, maybe I. Um, I don't know, didn't work as hard as maybe I should have and, you know, lost some weight. And I really learned, uh, like, what it took to to compete every day um, at that level. Um, College-wise, like, we had a great group of guys there every year. Um, had a lot of fun. Can't really complain, man. Like, uh, we, were, we were good, really competitive every year. Um, lost in the Frozen Four twice. Lost in the National Quarterfinals twice. So uh, as a team, as a team, we had lots of success and I really learned how to win there. Um, you know, in junior, I was on some winning teams. My last year junior, uh, I got traded to the Austin Bruins and was there for the last, you know, bit of that season. And we ended up losing in a Robbie Cup final. Um, but, you know, in, in Adrian, we the expectation was to win every game. And we just about did that every year. So just learning how to how to carry that swagger with you day in, day out. And, um, you know, just learn how to be a winner. I think that was huge, um, for my development moving into my first year pro. And you, you were played two sports. Yeah. It's just, I was going to get it. I was going to get into that. That's rare. Is that cause you didn't yeah. want to work out with the off season or what? <laughs> yeah. Alex Moran. Um, <laughs> no. Um, so I always played baseball. Um, I actually started like the fall of my freshman year or spring of my freshman year, joined the tennis team. Um, never got to get in a match cause I was like red shirted cause I joined halfway through, um, played the fall, fall season tennis, my sophomore year, and then hockey season started. Um, and I wanted to play baseball. Um, just didn't know like how I was going to try out or anything like that. They didn't really have tryouts for the NCAA team. Um, I ended up, I was really good buddies with a couple guys, um, on the team and one of them's actually playing pro. He's signed with the Cardinals now. Um, but he was a pitcher and he pretty much got me a, got me a trial. He's like, Hey, like my buddy says he can pitch. Like, would you look at him? And 
they brought me like I went out and threw with them a few days and um they brought me in to like throw a bullpen <laughs> and uh the coach liked me and um I was already buddies with a few of the guys on the team and I'm pretty like loud outgoing guy so they liked my morale around the room and stuff but um so that was you, awesome so you throw left-handed right-handed you yeah throw right-handed. it's like me like like at the time I was topping out like 87 on a fastball which is like average for like d3 and then I was fastball curveball changeup guy like Could reliever uh no the pitchers weren't allowed to touch bats in college <laughs> like what, we, you six four six five six five 225 pounds yeah I think and, that if you got a hold of a ball it would go maybe um i don't know honestly like if we got caught if a pitcher was seen holding a baseball bat <laughs> we were getting yelled at they're like don't touch bats you're a pitcher you throw baseballs you're gonna hurt somebody like that was the <laughs> i think in my my four years we had pitchers bp one time and one one guy jacked one may i think that's probably why he's like he doesn't want the pitchers to show up all the position guys albo nice of you to join us yeah sorry about uh, coming in late fellas yeah Glad i'm here yeah, that's a hilarious work. story so far <laughs> We're going to have to have a podcast on uh, taking ownership of your game and taking ownership of the podcast, that's for sure. Yeah, you know what? I need to read uh, Jocko Wilnick's Extreme Ownership, obviously. I think that's one of uh, the books that's collecting dust on Hoosier's sh- shelf, actually. <laughs> it's one of many books collecting dust on my shelf, yes. Yeah. Not, not, not big readers here on the pod. but So then at, so then, on your senior year at Adrian, I, re- I remember this because remember you, we talked about this ex- – a lot. You had ended up going to Norfolk Admirals in the East Coast Hockey League, and you had played half a game, one period. One period in the cheddar. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not gl- let's not gloss over his senior year where he had a nine forty nine save percentage, which is ridiculous and off the charts. Oh, wow. That's outrageous. And a one twenty goals against. <laughs> yeah. Holy. How are you? <laughs> and how how, you, how do you how do you have those numbers, and you only get eleven? Uh, was it 11 starts or how many starts? Did you um, get? I think I had, I think maybe it was 10 starts. I think it was 10 starts because in our national quarterfinal game, I went in with like five minutes left in the first. I got tossed in there, finished the game. So was the starter that year just a, like a stud or, or what happened? The starter was Kevin Entma. You guys know Kevin Entma, don't you? He's an Ontario yeah, he's, boy. He's an Ontario boy. I know Kevin. Yeah, great kid. Um, he was a year behind me, um, and he was – honestly, he was lights out. Like, his freshman year, he went undefeated um, as a freshman. Sophomore year, had a really good year. We had a D1 transfer who split time with him then. Um, and then my senior year, his junior year, um, he was playing pretty good. Like, he was pretty consistent, but, um, like, my numbers don't lie. Like, I was, I was the best goalie in the country as far as my numbers are concerned. I think I had one game all year where I gave up more than one goal. Um, or, sorry, two games where I gave up more than one goal. Um, granted, we had a good team in front of us, but uh, Kevin just had the games, and he had coaches trust, like, from the years past, and Kevin had proved that he could carry, carry the team, and um, he was more than capable of doing so. He was a great goalie, unreal puck handler, um, still is a great goalie, um, awesome guy, awesome teammate, and uh, – so I think it was just easier for Krug to kind of ride as his uh, his previous guy than um, I guess give me a little more more of a shake than probably probably deserved more in my senior year for sure without question. But at the end of the day, it all worked out. So it all worked out. You're playing pro. How nervous were you to get in that that period in Norfolk? Or were you I so <laughs> honestly, um, I I remember being super relaxed. Cause I didn't know I was supposed to start potentially the game. And then um, they came in and told me uh, I wasn't going to start. And then they're like, we'll see what happens. We might just split you half and half. So it's like coming up halfway through the second period. And it's like a two, one game. My goalie partner's playing really well. Um, Jamie Murray was the guy. Uh, it was his last game of like his pro career. He was getting double hip surgery in the summer. So he was like, yeah, we don't know if we're going to pull him or not. Like, I was like, yeah, like if he's playing unreal, like it's his last game, like let him play. Like I, I would love to get in, but I'm not about to steal that from someone. Um, and he was an awesome goalie as well. Play, he played an unreal game. So I'm like, yeah, I don't think I'm getting in here. It was after the second and it was 2-1 and 
the coach just came in and he's like, Hey, you're going in. It's like, Oh, okay, sweet. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I was, I was, I was like super calm, super relaxed. It was just like, it was almost like a sigh of relief. Like, Hey, you did it. Like it's happening. Um, and I just wanted to take it all in. Like I knew I really had nothing to lose. Like this was the last game of their season. Uh, they didn't make playoffs that year, unfortunately. So I was like, it's 20 minutes, like 20 minutes hockey. Uh, not to mention I had an unreal senior year. So I was going in with tons of confidence and knew I was um, capable of playing at that level. So I was just trying to take it all in and, and really enjoy the experience. And it was awesome. It was a great time. Uh, got to go out and have a little fun with the boys afterwards uh, when we got back to Norfolk too. So um, that was fun celebrate, you know, their season with them. And um, a, a buddy of mine, Taylor McCloy, another Ontario boy, Keswick, uh, Keswick, <laughs> Ontario native. Um, Curtis Joseph's actually, hometown. What's that? Curtis Joseph's hometown. Oh, wow. <laughs> Clean yeah. the fame. Trivia guy, um, trivia guy, Alvo. <laughs> right on. Love that. But uh, he was my freshman year roommate, actually, and he signed with me in Norfolk as well. So that was pretty special to, you know, both of us kind of make our debuts together and be able to watch each other do it. So then after that, the, you, had, you went to Orlando's training camp, right? Because we, we mm-hmm. played against each other. Yep. So we played against each other uh, in exhibition when I was in Florida. And then so you ended up then getting sent down to Fayetteville in, in the SP. Mm-hmm. Had a really solid career. What was your experience like in the SPHL? Uh, it was interesting, man. Um, first full year of pro hockey. First year as a starter, too. Um, like I was never a starter in college. So that was something going in. I, I wanted to be a starter and wanted to prove I could be the guy. And um, Jesse Kalecki, the head coach there in Fayetteville, was great for me. He was an awesome dude. Um, he was also a goalie, so that was nice, um, you know, having someone who, who knows what it's like being a pro goalie. And he was, you know, recently retired. So uh, just having him there to kind of help guide me through, you know, the ups and downs of a season. And um, we're a team that we had a lot of skill, but we also had a lot of up and, up and down uh, points in our year. Um so just having Jesse there to kind of like, you know, be an open ear whenever I needed one and give me advice when I, whenever I needed some was huge. Um, again, like great group of guys there. That was my first time living in the South too. Loved that. Um, yeah. Uh, other than our bus, we got treated pretty well. Our bus broke down just about every other road trip and that was brutal. Um, I think that was something else, you know, being a pro I learned, uh, just travels brutal <laughs> at the minor levels. Like, especially when your bus is breaking down, you know, every other trip and it's making trips five to seven hours longer than what they should be. Um, just how important it is to take care of your body and do the little things um, off the ice away from the rink to, to make sure you're staying sharp uh, as the season goes on. Was your bus driver just like a wild, wild person or pretty? Oh yeah. His name's oh, yeah. Dano. <laughs> he, uh, he, uh, his claim to fame is he used to drive Willie Nelson's tour bus. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Man. This guy was oh. electric. I, the, the bus drivers in, in the cheddar are some of the craziest people. We had one, I'm not going to say which team it was, but he used to rip darts on the bus. So we'd be yeah. sleeping and this, you just smell of cigarettes would just be seeping all over the bus. You're just <laughs> trying to do sleep. That too. <laughs> oh man. Because other, otherwise, otherwise, they have to stop every 15 minutes to have a dart. So the coach yeah. is like, yeah, just drive through and just smoke. We'll try to arrow the bus. <laughs> yeah. Crack a window for the boys. When you were in Fayetteville, uh, you played with Alex Murray. Yeah. yeah I remember I was at the hospital for the birth of my daughter, and I, I must have been 20 minutes apart. I get, a, I get a text message from DK saying I signed in Fayetteville. 20 minutes later, I look at my phone, I get a text message from Murray saying, I just signed in Fayetteville and I'm at the <laughs> hospital. He's, and both guys can't tell anybody yet because it hasn't been, hasn't been announced. So uh, Alex Murray is just another one of uh, Bougie and goaltending alum. So you oh, got any we'll crazy stories on Murr? <laughs> my no, <boy>. man. Um, <laughs> some, some things on Murr. He's an unbelievable dancer. Loves the D floor. Um, he's got a few signature moves that if, if you know Murr and you've gone out with Murr, you, you probably know what those moves are. Um, he's so funny, big, big, uh, um, superhero movie guy. 
loves his Avengers and um, his uh, what what are they called? I don't even. What kind of movies are they called? I don't even know. Oh, the Marvel man, we, movies? Yeah, but Marvel everyone, movies. Yeah, big whenever, Marvel movie guy. Whenever we would work out, he would insist on Guardians of the Galaxy playlist. Nothing <laughs> no. else, and he won't choose anything else. It was only that playlist. And then when the second movie came out. He was like, okay, there's two playlists I listen to. Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and Guardians of the Galaxy 2. <laughs> uh, Great I remember that, though. <laughs> it is good. Uh, we'll have him on. We got, yeah. We got, we'll got, we got, he's got. And he's got now he's, best. now he's done? Oh, we'll have him on for sure. I talked to him about a month ago. And yeah, he said he was, he, I think he said he was done. He was doing some coaching in minor midget this year. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. And his team actually had a good run. I mean, they got beat out by one of my goalies, but I'm not going to boast about that. <laughs> but uh, I tried getting him to come to Danbury, stories. actually. Oh, we wouldn't invite yeah, him. Yeah, let's get into that right now. No, Danbury, I... you played in the federal league this season in Dan in Danbury, so let's let's get right into that. Danbury was great, man. Um, going the in, hat-trick. like I really, yeah, the Danbury hat tricks. Uh, I really wasn't sure what to expect. Um, you hear a lot of horror stories about the Fed. Um, you know, going in, I felt like I was above the league and whatnot, but um, I needed a place to play, and I knew you know, going there and playing games was going to be better than me sitting at home and just training with my college team until um, another SP team came calling. So um, I went to Danbury and it was one of the best decisions I've, I've made, I think in my playing career, um, Billy McQuarrie, um, awesome dude, like great coach. One of my favorite coaches I've ever had. Um, Matt Voidy the assistant there um, runs Voidy goaltending out of, out of Connecticut. And uh, you know, having like, he was there every single day. I, I could get on the ice 30 to 40 minutes early with him every single practice. And that was something I haven't had in my pro career yet. So just being able to work with a goalie coach 24 seven was awesome. Um, the group of guys there was uh, the best group I've ever played with. Um, the team camaraderie in the room was unlike anything I've ever felt um, anything I've ever been a part of. And we just, we had something special there, but uh I got treated really well. Um, the guys were great. And ultimately that's all that matters, right? Is if you're playing, you're having fun. Uh, the guys are cool and you like your coaches and that you're treated the right way. And uh, I can say Danbury did that. So, um, you know, moving forward, I don't know what's to come next year. Uh, sounds like a lot of the guys want to go back there because we have some unfinished business. Um, we really had our sights set on winning a championship this year, which that was my goal um, in deciding to stay and not take any more call-ups was I just felt like for my playing resume, that was something I needed. That was something I wanted on my resume that, you know, I could be a guy to carry a team through playoffs and, and win a championship and um, be the guy through the long haul. And um, that that was ultimately one of the reasons why I chose to stay and the guys. Like, the guys were awesome there, um, some of my best buddies. And uh, I wanted to stay and be with them. So next year we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll see what comes my way. I'm, curious about going overseas um would would love to continue climbing the ladder here in north america but um uh, you know it's a long off season so we'll see what happens wild yet a full-time goalie coach in the federal league when right there's only and there's only one east coast team no two east coast teams that have a full-time goalie coach and one of those is because the goalie coach is also the assistant coach that's that's crazy that's a yeah good it was awesome man and like we could get as much ice as we wanted like pregame pregame skates like it was the first place i'd go like on a pregame skate if i was starting i'd get out there early with him i'd do my things with him it was just like in like the nhl how the goalie co- the goalie goes out with the goalie coach gets his work in takes a few flow drills and gets off like that's what i would do like i'd probably be on the ice with the guys for 10 minutes maybe um once everyone else was on there on the ice and it was just i don't know i i felt like i was really treated like a professional goalie by by him and the organization there so that was pretty cool that's big time that's like it's so nice Mm -hmm. to have that support and then so during their last season you started your dk the mobility guy business and you just today launched a website so uh let's get into that so you you, i'm pretty sure you studied kin in university right Correct. Uh, so kinesiology, exercise science. So you studied, so you studied Ken, and then you started yeah. this. So what, uh, you know, what was the catalyst to start in this mobility project? Um, so it kind of goes back to like in Fayetteville, I was towards the end of the year, I was dealing with like not injuries, just like aches and pains. And just like, I'd wake up one day and like my left hip flexor would just be like bugging me. And then the next day I'd wake up and my right groin's bugging me. And it's just, um, throughout the course of a year, there's just, 
with the travel and the games and all the practices. It's, I just, I wanted to figure out, like, I wanted to take better care of my body and think, okay, how can I, how can I better, better assist myself? How can I better assist goalies, um, you know, to live a more pain-free life? And uh, I've always wanted to be a personal trainer. I always had my, my sights set on, um, you know, opening my own personal training business. But um, after starting doing this uh, kin stretch mobility um, type training, uh, and I saw the benefits it, it really had for me this summer. And yeah, I, I knew it, it, it was what I wanted to do. Um, I, it was a game changer for me. Um, I've never been the most flexible guy. And um, now I'm going out there and I can do the splits and that. And it's like, I had never, never thought I'd ever be able to do that. So um, I just, I saw what it's done for me and done for my game and more than just hockey, just if I wake up one day and you know, I'm sore, like I know how to handle it now. Like instead of going about my day, just being like, Oh shit, I can't wait for this pain to go away. Like I know how to get rid of it right away. And um, that's what I want to give to people. Um, it's something that, you know, parents and adults can benefit from too, like not just goalies. Um, I think all athletes should be doing more of this kind of training. And it's something that really goes overlooked. I think nowadays um, and, and training for, for athletes, but um yeah, so I started this in October and um, you know, just I'm getting ready to drop a goalie specific uh, workout program. I'm calling the Net Ninja Series. Um, it's going to be a two part program. Uh, the first part's butterflies and pad stacks. So that's going to be mostly lower body mobility. Uh, and then I'm going to have a, another series dropping probably. Uh, we'll see. But um, that's going to be more upper body stuff. Um, and then I've got some other programs that I'm off that I, I have, I have a mobility and core program, um, beginner mobility and a made mobile program for, um, really anybody, athletes, parents, coaches, um, you know, that one's a little bit more in depth, a little more advanced, but, um, yeah. So I'm really excited about this. Uh, I'm really excited to get working with some goalies here and help guys make some changes. That's awesome. You said Hold something, uh, you said something really important there. Uh, when you talked about in Danbury not wanting any calls because you wanted to be a guy that proved you could be a number one goalie and carry a team through playoffs to a championship. If you didn't take care of your body like you did, what do you think the chances of you being able to do that over the long haul would have been? Uh, it would have been a lot harder. I think that's for sure. Um, it's all about like – as like the once you get to the end of the year it's all about making things as easy as possible like make it easy to show up to the rink every day make it easy to show up to games make it easy to feel good like that's that's like my biggest thing is like make it easy on yourself to feel good whether it's your mental routine your mental preparation your pregame routine whatever it is towards the end of the year like like it's a long season like you don't want to have this big long extensive warm-up that like just drains you before you even get on the ice for warm-ups um, and to be able to repeat something like that, you know, for whatever it is, 50, 60 games, it's hard. It's not easy. And, um, you know, the better your body, the better you can help your body feel day to day, the easier it's going to be for you to, to feel good mentally and, and be sharp uh, when, when it comes game time. Yeah. And what, what a lot of young guys got to realize that when they're still trying to climb or get noticed or get drafted or be recruited, you 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 need to be on the ice. You need to be in games. And if you're not taking care of your body and putting yourself in a position where you can play a lot of games and be seen, and not only be seen but also be seen being consistent, then the chance of you being recruited definitely go down. So, Absolutely. Yeah, mobility is something that I think over the last two or three years has really come to the forefront in goalie development. But mm -hmm. I think it's something that guys still kind of put on the back burner where hopefully with guys like you that are offering services, these guys take that a little bit more seriously and their ability to stay in games and be more consistent and be on the ice more is going to help them with getting drafted or being recruited or showcasing themselves to higher levels. Like you just said, you wanted to do too. Absolutely. I think yeah, like man. I mean, no, go, go ahead. On. DK. No, 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 go. Oh no. I was just going to say like, like you, you said it all, the more you can be on the ice, the better you're going to be. Um, you know, it's, it's awesome. If you want to be that guy to stay on the ice and take extra reps every day after practice, like coaches love that. But if you're not taking care of your body off the ice down the long, like in the long run, you're not going to be able to do that because you're going to be sore and 
you know, practice is going to be over and you'll be like, oh, I'm hurting. I just want to get off today. And um, the less of those days that you have, the better off you're going to be. Yeah, that's just right. What I was going to say is it's not only is it mobility wise in terms of making those shades, especially with the kin stretch kind of stuff and the FRC that you teach is that end range strength that protects your body and gives it the strength and your, and your joints, the stability to get in those positions. And it also is going to help reduce injury. And we've seen mm -hmm. it time and time again, especially now, you know, with the inflammation of uh, RVH and just the overall impact that, you know, it sounds it's weird to say, but the butterfly style, all those repetitive butterflies has on your hips and knees and ankles. If you're not taking care of yourself, there's a good possibility you might end up as one of those guys that's getting double hip replacement at 15, 16 years old. And then you lose a year of development and you might be behind the eight ball just because you didn't take care of your body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you're dropping all, all sorts of cash on surgery that that could have been avoided if you would have just taken care of your body to, to begin with. Yeah, it's, that's crazy. But, uh, so we'll, we'll make sure we link your website, uh, in the show notes and in Spotify and in the description on YouTube. But, um, so right now, what are you doing? Like, are you in, you're in Petoskey full time or are you still? No, down? actually my parents, so my parents moved to Traverse city. So I'm in Traverse city now. Um, I'm just honestly like this time right now, uh, it's actually been pretty busy for me in DK mobility. Uh, you know, it kind of evens the playing field with everyone being forced to, to go online and, and do at home stuff. So fortunately for me, um, I've had quite a few, few people reaching out for programs and stuff like that. So and I've obviously been making this website and, um, kind of, uh, revamping my business a little bit, uh, going more goalie specific, uh, moving forward here. Um, so that's, that's honestly been mostly of what I've been doing is, is that and, uh, Fortnite trying to get good at Fortnite. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not good at Fortnite. Um, Sorry. so Sorry. I've never, never been much of a video game guy, but at this point it's, you know, work, dude, I'll, I'll do DK mobility stuff for, you know, try and do it for, you know, four to six, seven hours a day, take the dog on a walk and then it's Fortnite. <laughs> Are you doing custom programs? I do. Yeah, I do. Custom so if, we, if any, well. if any goalies want a custom program, they can just hit you up and you guys can definitely work something out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can hit me up on my, on my Instagram. You can DM me, um, my email and everything's on my website. You can get a hold of me through there. Uh, there's a contact page. Um, so yeah, well, anything anyone needs, whether it's mobility or fitness programs, like my gotcha. <laughs> All right, Albo, uh, you had a question you want to ask? Yeah, I wanted to go back to uh, something you said about your experience in the Fed. You said that uh, the camaraderie in the room was something that you really appreciated. And uh, we've all seen the effects of, of a tight room. It can just elevate everybody's game. And I always say, you know, give me a team that has, has a tight room, really respects each other, will really battle for each other mm -hmm. over a team that is just made up of good hockey players. That yeah, absolutely. Individual. So um, as a goalie, whether you're a starter or a backup, like I think it's, it's important to kind of try to have your own influence in the room on the team. So like, what do you think some, some guys can do that are just kind of at the junior level, maybe just starting their pro career or their college career? Like what can you do to, to help contribute to the good vibes in the room? Yeah. Um, honestly, like the biggest thing is just be yourself. Like, like me, I think there are times, whether it was, going to a new team or um you just you kind of question like okay how should i act and you should never ask yourself how should i act like you just act act like yourself like i'm a loud obnoxious goofy guy like that's how i need to be and that's how i'm gonna play my best is when i'm goofing around in the room and that that's what makes me comfortable um you know if you're not acting like yourself you're not going to be comfortable and people can feel that you can feel um you know that tension coming off of somebody so um I would say be yourself. Um, every morning I try to be like very positive and upbeat, like try and say good morning to everybody and, you know, have a, you know, kind of a little bit of a pep in my step and um, some, you know, excitement in my voice. I think, I think that can go a long ways, especially throughout the course of a long year when, you know, let's say it's month, it's the fourth month and, you know, it's practiced 400 of the season or whatever. Um, 
you know, you're walking in some, some days it is easy to just be like, uh, like come in. I want to go through the motions, but if you've got a guy, whether it's a goalie or somebody else, Hey man, good morning. How you doing? Like, how are we doing today? Blah, blah, blah. It's like, it just kind of wakes you up and gives you that little bit of a jolt. And, um, so, so that, and just bring your work boots every day. Like, especially as a goalie, like players love a goalie who loves to work hard, battle and practice. Like whether it's in practice and you play out that extra rebound or, um, after practice, you want to play games and dink around with the boys. Like that's what guys like. So, um, if there's any, any, um, suggestions or advice I can give is be yourself, work hard and, uh, just try and like, it's cliche, but it'd be positive and be vocally yeah. positive. Yeah. I love that. Right on, man. So what are you wearing for gear these days? You are a little bit in your own head when it comes to gear. 100% I am. <laughs> little, maybe a mental midget when it comes to gear. You Absolutely. You around from every brand. So what yeah. are you into these days? Uh, it's funny. This summer I was a gear whore and tried just about everything. I tried Bowers. I tried, um, I tried Brian's. I tried, um, what else did I try? I don't know, CCM, man. I tried I, CCMs for a bit. I had CCMs. I had P2s. Um, last year I was in E-Flex 3s. I'm in E-Flex 4s now. Ultimately, I like, went back to the, <laughs> what I knew, and that's that's E-Flexes. So I'm in E-Flex 4s, uh, 580 glove. Can't get out of it. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm locked in for sure on, the, on that. Um, you never went, yeah, back, to like you never went back to Vaughn eh? as a Michigan guy. You, ne- you wore Vaughn college man. and you jumped ship. Yeah, and I honestly I had a gross year my senior year in Bond. Maybe I'll maybe I'll have to go back. Like, I don't know. <laughs> oh, don't worry, we'll um, let that out. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, Vaughn, It was just too like it was too long of a wait. Like they're so busy over there. Like they have so many guys that it was just for someone like me to try and get a get a set quickly. It's impossible. So um, I'm just wearing like um all you know your basic um suitcase minor pro goalie all white e flux fours uh i've got some pad wrap on there but hey, yeah there's nothing wrong with going all solid color because then you, sometimes you end up like me with green all green pads on a purple team or blue <laughs> pads on a red team yeah you got if you're unsure go all white get the pad wrap like, yeah at least you at least you look good if you don't stop any pucks it's on you but at least you look good absolutely no free ads, pad wrap either. Yeah, no free ad, pad wrap. <laughs> no free ads. <laughs> I, my question here, and I've been sitting on this for about 25 minutes. When you two played against each other in the coast, why was there no goalie tilt? Because I didn't actually I, get to play against them. I had to play oh, against yeah, the other guy. That, who was it? Was it Booth? You know, Helvig. You played Helvig. Helvig, yeah. Yeah. Because if, no. you, if you YouTube Jamie Phillips and honors Lindback on – uh, yeah, goalie I, tilt. I, well, I, well, is, that's a whole other pod. That's a whole <laughs> hour long topic. pod. We could we could break down that forty five seconds. Yeah, second basically second. what what not to do when a six foot eight monster skates at you. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's it's let him punch you in the face. It's what you don't Step do. Step one, keep your glove on. Yeah, but, oh, that was like that Strap exhibition. Yeah. That exhibition game. That there's two ones that we played. I don't know about – well, not – like, I have cramping issues and sweating issues when I play. So, like, the game where you didn't play, like, I was trash because I couldn't see because I was so dehydrated. But were you just not leaking out there? It was 110 outside. Humid. It was Ice so was trash. hot. Yeah, I do remember that. That Even in Orlando, man, like, we lived, like, from our apartment to the, our practice rink, I could hit it with a baseball. And I walked to the rink one day and I had to like shower when I got home. Like, or I walked home from the rink one day and I had to shower when I got home. I was like, you, you couldn't even, you, it was so hot. It's so hot down there at that point. Like you can't even walk around. People like, it's hard. People don't like think they're like, Oh, hockey in the South. It's, it's so hard to play in the South division, but it's so humid. The ice is terrible. And that's like, and we're mm-hmm. talking about gear. Like that was a big reason I'd switched out of CCM to Bauer was even the CCM premieres and the premier twos, they kind of absorb moisture where the Bowers were pretty good. They didn't, didn't absorb moisture. So they stayed solid and light out mm-hmm. on the ice. So, I mean, like I, for me, I had a hard time playing in the South, not like statistically, but just the amount of water and Pedialyte and the things I had to do just to make sure I didn't cramp up was just, it was just honestly a nightmare. Mm-hmm. I, I feel that too. Like I, um, I have some cramping issues too. And 
I can, like it isn't nearly as warm in Fayetteville as it is in Florida, but um, I definitely had more of that. Um, I think in Fayetteville than um, like this year, I didn't have one moment where I felt like I was cramping or something like that. Whereas in Fayetteville, there was a few. So, so the mobility program is paying off, man. You don't need to cramp. You're yeah, so, trying, so, trying so to. Mobile. Man. <laughs> fun, fun fact, actually, when Murr got traded to, or I think Murr would have been, I don't know if he got traded or he got picked up by um, Evansville and we were playing Evansville. Um, him and I tried to choreograph a goalie fight. We were like, hey, if opportunity present, uh, presents itself, let's do it. And he, we actually talked about just wrestling. <laughs> like, like doing like a bear wrestle at center ice and going viral. I, I think you could have physically manhandled him. But I think he would have been laughing at you the whole time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We've been laughing at each other without question. He'd be the guy you take him down, he'd lick your face. You know yeah, oh, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> oh no that's good stuff man it's yeah goalie i can't believe it was choreographed we had a, in one of my teams uh our captain was a nut like nut job and this was right after i had honors Limbach beat me up so i get sent down and he he comes up he's like oh you want to be a fighter now and i was like i, I, I no i don't know he's like he's like all right you know next time you want to fight just let me know the goalie's, I'll dump the puck in. The goalie, the other goalie will go play it. I'll run him from behind. He'll jump me. You come in and save me. I was like, no. We're not going to do that. <laughs> no. Like, I, I'm, like, I'm like, I think my actual answer was like, all right, but it needs to be a smaller goalie than 6'8". <laughs> <laughs> we well, need a confidence boost fight now. Oh, we got to we'll even have your fun. record. We have to have a pod where we just go over some of the crazy things that I've seen in the leagues. Because, oh, especially when there's, you know, we get guys on that still play. It's tough to, to go. It's just nuts. They can get wild. Oh. I've been in, I've been in two goalie fights actually. I was in one in the one in Corpus Christi that I told you about, and then last year, I've, I've, I've never fought a goalie. Um, the I fought a player when I was in Corpus. Up, oh, Fifi is making her, her podcast debut <laughs> um but uh last year we were in Macon we lost I think it was like 4-1 or something like that end of the game and um Max Cook uh was kind of at center ice like John with one of their guys and their guy was uh, poking at him whatever and a little I don't know everyone swarmed around center ice and nothing was really nothing too crazy was going on at first just like grabbing and shoving on around cookie um and then I saw like I didn't know it at the time, but it was Macon's tough guy, uh, just like blindside one of my D men, um, just completely blindside him in the head, and I just, I just snapped. I like, I speared him, dropped my stick, my glove, ripped my helmet off, and I just started throwing punches, like full Donkey Kong, King Kong mode, and uh, <laughs> I ended up getting grabbed and thrown on the ground by like three guys. Guys face washing me, like, um, got suspied. What did I get suspect for? I think he got suspect three games, three games for it. But um, that was a player as well. Didn't didn't get to touch the goalie there. But hopefully one day before I'm before I'm done, I get to fight a goalie. Yes, yeah, so make sure you take both gloves off when you uh, fight goalie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is anybody any questions? Or uh, it was a good good episode. Yeah. No, DK showing some personality. I like it. Yeah, it's nice. We'll have to get you on, especially. Uh, into next season and so we can hear uh how things are going especially where you end up yeah man absolutely that'd be sick i i love this this was fun thanks for having me yeah thanks for coming on we'll link your we'll link all your mobility stuff on our social media and for goalies out there like whole this is we've been talking about how you need to take ownership of your game and like we're not doing anything you're there's nothing going on in the world right now that you should be stuck in your house like now you should be doing this mobility program and getting better like so we're gonna make sure that we get some goalies on it but thanks a lot for taking the time to do this we really uh really appreciate it anytime guys thanks for having me I won't hold you down.